Our values and emotions play a role in our behaviors, and so do our ethics and morals. What's the difference between ethics and morality anyway? And what do you do with them? Does your GM care about you, or is it all about a good time for them? Which is more important to you, ethics or morality? That's probably the only trick question you'll encounter in leading with class. The reality is that they're both equally important and inform each other. While definitions vary, ethics are the guidelines that we create for our actions and behaviors, and morality is the inherent standard we have for those actions and behaviors. As an example, when I ask my players to use consent or content tools like script change or the X card at the game table, I'm applying ethical guidelines to their behavior. When I personally choose to avoid content that I know is racist or otherwise bigoted, I'm using my moral center to guide that decision. Both of these help to provide happier, safer experiences at the game table. But ethics and morality are far broader than that. For this episode, we're going to focus on creative and social morality and ethics, because games are a creative and social experience, and because these apply outside of games equally well. I'm not going to give you guidelines on leadership, we cover that in episode zero. But I hope you enjoy this delve into one of the hardest parts of leadership, doing the right thing. Let's start with creative ethics and how morality factors in. Ethics come into play anytime you're in charge of creating something. Are you a game master, a player, a game designer? All of this applies to you. As creators, gamers have power they don't even know about. We're creating new narratives, making use of old stories, and doing so within the bounds of a social agreement. That means we have to respect all of the old stories and the creators that made them, while also considering the new content, ensuring it's respectful and caring. Caring is something very important in ethics, and it's underrated. It simply has to do with in a relationship. I'm connected to you, and you're connected to me, so what we do has an effect on each other. One topic I learned about in my studies was the ethics of care. Caring has two major variations. It has caring about and caring for. Caring about is typically the idea of caring about people without necessarily engaging in giving care to them, like you might care about someone you've never met but is in a crisis far away, while caring for is actually caring for the person in some measurable way. What does this mean? At the game table, a game master, or GM, could bring in a new monster that they made to fight, a giant spider that's got way too many extra legs. In this example, maybe you're very afraid of spiders, and the GM knew that. This GM might care about the players, but that's not the same as giving care. The GM wants to get a fright from the table and have an exciting session. They're exercising their legitimate GM power, and potentially other forms of power, to make that happen. A GM exercising caring ethics would instead ask the table before introducing a new monster. Does anyone have any phobias that we should avoid with monsters or threats? And then not use those monsters or threats that could harm a real person at the game table. Imagine if we exercised care like that in our creative work in gaming. If we did, we would ask before we used other people's creative work, act with the intent to do what is most beneficial for people overall. Think about how our content could potentially harm or threaten others. Avoid actions that harm or threaten others, including use of language or behaviors, and apologize when our actions hurt people because we care for their well-being. That almost sounds like a code of ethics. More on that in a minute. How does this tie into morality? Well, everyone has their own morality. However, it's informed by things like codes of ethics, culture, religion, experiences, all kinds of things. Sometimes those even change people's morality. My moral stances have changed massively in the past, in part because of gaming. So a group of gamers might put into place some rules to guide behavior so that it's more caring, less harmful, and focused on positive action. Even if a player's moral baseline on scaring players is, I don't care if they're scared of spiders, it's funny, and funny matters most, they may, over time, see the benefit of ethics that promote care. Their moral perspective could change to, if it scares someone too much, 
that's not fun for them, and that's not right. Part of the purpose of a code of ethics is to catch the people who lack the moral standards that support a more caring experience in games and in other environments. Codes of ethics help avoid abuses of power and establish guidelines for when it's right to resist the actions taken by someone in a leadership role. When Spider GMs builds multi layers all over your table because they didn't agree to ethical guidelines that support a spider-free table, and you have no support to call them out on it, you can see how ethics might be useful. That brings me to Lincoln Green and social ethics. Lincoln Green is a game currently in development by Epidia Ravichol. The game is thematically very Robin Hood and has robbing from the rich to give to the poor as part of play. I asked permission to use the game's code of ethics for this video. The Outlaw's Oath is a strong example of a code of ethics and is relevant to social ethics. It also truly demonstrates caring ethics, where the outlaws who agree to it are taking responsibility for the well being and care of the common folk. This is one of the few instances I've seen where a designer is creating a code of ethics for the characters in their games. We've seen things like this for the paladins in Dungeons and Dragons, but a specific set of ethics for all player characters who are participating is different. I think about how having to follow a code might impact my gameplay, and then I return to my earlier words about how codes of ethics in real life can change the morality of a person. This means that in a unique situation of playing Lincoln Green, you're transformed into an outlaw who has a code of ethics that you know and can reference. It raises the question of what happens when you break the oath. What happens if you rigidly stick to it? Who in the game might you encounter that wouldn't follow the same ethics? And most importantly, when you leave the table, what about those ethics goes home with you? For me at least, I don't think I would mind some of the Lincoln Green's outlaw's oath sticking with me. I definitely look good in green. I hope this episode has given you some food for thought about ethics and morality. It's a weighty topic, and it's not something I take lightly. Look in the description below or on a Patreon post for links to the sources for our definitions and examples, and for an exercise on ethics. I hope you'll share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Special thanks to William L. and Brian for sponsoring this episode. Join them in supporting this channel with your pledge at patreon.com slash leadingwithclass. Thank you so much for watching. To see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, even outlaws have codes. Mm -hmm.